Hi, in this video, I'm going to show how to create and train a convolutional neural network for semantic segmentation using the MATLAB Deep Learning Toolbox Deep Network Designer, uh, which is a graphic user interface. So semantic segmentation is one of the most precise ways of detecting objects because it tells you to which object category each pixel corresponds to. And from that, you can infer uh, geometric shapes of objects and their colors. Okay, so to do this example, uh, I'm going to do a walkthrough through this uh, MATLAB example, which is in the links in the references. So to open it, just click open script, live script, and that'll take us to here. And basically the first step is to load the data. Uh, and the data in this case is in the uh, MATLAB installation folder. So we're just going to take a peek at the data, open outside MATLAB. So we can see that we have a triangle. The images are very small. Uh, to make the training easier, it's going to be 32 by 32 and black and white. And the corresponding for this image, there's a corresponding labeled image that is going to take you the categories of the pixels. So in this case, we have a either black or white. Black is background, white is a triangle. So that's how the classification is done. Okay, so let's go back to the folder, uh, change to the current folder of this. And now uh, we're going to get uh, the full file because uh, this is, uh, semantic segmentation is a very common problem in in computer vision. So for that, uh, the MATLAB Deep Learning Toolbox, uh, the computer vision toolbox has specific, uh, special data stores for it. Uh, there's a, a data store for images. You specify the folder of the images and it's going to basically pick up the 200 images from it. It's not going to read them immediately. It's just going to have the file. And when you do the training, it's going to read the image at that time, only when it needs it. Otherwise, it's going to take too much memory. OK, for the, the, for the corresponding image, there's going to be a label, a pixel label image. And for that, there's a data store as well. And that data store as well takes the path to where the images are and the class names, which in this case is triangle and background, and the corresponding colors, white for triangle, black for background. OK, so you give the two of those. And we have to pair them into a combined data store. And the combined, combined data store and the, the underlying data stores are going to be image and pixel. So it's going to be paired one with the other, and that's going to be used for training. So the first one, uh, the image is going to be provided as the input for the network. Uh, the, the image is going to be provided here and the output of the network is going to be another image of the same size but with the classification and that image is subtracted from the expected data to create the loss and from the loss uh, you compute symbolically the gradient and you go uh, in reverse computing the gradient symbolically in reverse so that you can get the gradient of the output of the loss corresponding to the weights and from that gradient, you update the weight, and that's how you train uh, the network. OK, uh, so semantic segmentation is a little bit different from other uh, convolutional networks, like, for example, a convolutional network that you want, in which you want to detect an object, but you don't care to have information about where is that object, where the object is. So in that case, the input is going to be an image, but the output is going to be a classification category. For example, if you're detecting 10 types of object, the output can be a scalar whose value is a, class, a category between 0 and 9. Or if you're doing one hot encoding, it's going to be a, a vector of 10 booleans. Uh, but for the case of semantic segmentation, the output is going to be an image uh, of the same size as the input image that can be overlaid in the original image. And the, the pixels have values of the classification. So in a regular convolution network, you're going to do the uh, convolution, the, the max pooling uh, to get uh, the convolution gets the local properties. The max pooling gets the global properties between different places in the image and also brings down the size with the stride of the max pooling. It brings down uh, the size of the image. so the the geometric uh, dimension gets smaller as you go through the encoding phase. And the number of features gets higher to get more information about the image. And eventually, for semantic segmentation, you need to bring back the image size to the original size. And by that, you have to use transpose convolution, which has its own stride, which is going to bring up the image size back to the original size. 
Okay, so let's make this network using the deep network designer, which you can open using this command, or I guess you can open it from apps as well. Okay, so that brings us to here. We're gonna select a blank network. First, we need the input image, uh, which is gonna be a, a small image, a black and white, 32 by 32 by one. Okay, now let's make a convolutional layer. It's going to be 3x3. Three three. It's going to have a 64 filters. That's the number of features of the output. Padding is going to be one by one. The rest is the same. And since we're going to have three convolution layers, let's have a particular name for it. Okay. Let's connect them. Uh, we need a rectify linear unit for uh, to have non-linearity, make the network stronger, and also for regularization and avoid overfitting, we have a couple of them, so let's give a particular name. And again, the max pooling to have uh, the global uh, features. So max pooling, and this is gonna have a stride of two by two, which is gonna divide the image size by two. And this, the pool size is gonna be two by two as well. And the padding is gonna be zero. Again, uh, we're gonna have another phase of convolution and relus, so it's gonna, they're gonna have the same property, so we're just gonna change their name. Okay. And finally, uh, now we finish with the encoding phase. So for the decoding, we're gonna use a transpose convolution that is gonna have the same uh, stride as the max pooling to compensate. Basically, it's gonna bring the image size to, to double. And we're gonna have 64 features to be consistent. And the filter size is gonna be four by four. Okay. Uh, now, uh, let me see what else. The cropping is has to be one by one. Okay. And now we're gonna have the final convolution, and this convolution is not gonna make any changes on the image, so it's gonna be one by one. The whole purpose of it is to bring down the fissures to two, because we have 64 fissures and we want only two fissures to detect triangle or or background. So. In this one, the padding is going to be zero. Okay, number, okay. Padding is going to be zero. Okay. And uh, for this, uh, you can uh, increase the size or decrease the size by scroll, uh, holding control and using the scroll from the mouse. And also, if you want to cover the whole screen, you can just uh, hit spacebar. This is similar controls to what you find in Simulink, which is pretty convenient because you don't have to learn new uh, keyboards, key yeah, shortcuts. Okay, so we have the, the third one, we have to rename it as, as the third convolution. And finally, we have the classification, which are at the end, softmax, this is gonna be a per pixel classification. And finally, we have a pixel classification layer. This is for semantic segmentation. And we have to just rename it to be consistent with the example. Uh, they name it as class output. Okay, so we have the network already, and this should be equivalent to having a uh, being using this command. So we just can highlight and hit F9, and we will have exactly the same. Okay, so now a uh, ne next step is to import the data. We are in the designer tab. We're going now to the data tab. And we import the data, we, we already had it as a data store. So that opens in the other window. So that's why it doesn't show up. Okay, so we're gonna use uh, the combined data store. Evaluation is important to avoid overfitting, but in this case, for simplicity, we're not gonna have a, a, a validation data. So this is gonna show us an example, as mentioned before, the image data is paired with another image of the same size that has the classification per pixel, in this case, triangle background. Okay, so now we're gonna do the training. Let's go to the training tab, training options, 
this is gonna bring up the train options in the other screen so you have to bring it here uh, let's choose a slower learning rate I'm basically following the example in here just for reference a hundred uh, epochs a little bit smaller batch size and after you finish you just hit close and then just hit the train play button and this should take about uh, five minutes to train and you can see that it's going to use the GPU it's going to confirm that it is using GPU uh, in here and it, it, it uses about a uh, two two percent of the GPU on occasions it could do better but at least it's using something mm -hmm. as expected it starts low accuracy gets pretty high to close to 100 percent same goes in loss and eventually they're gonna be cl very close to 100 and zero uh, this is a small problem uh, with small data small images so it should not take long to train uh, okay so I'm gonna pause uh, while it finishes Okay, uh, the network finished training and it's very close to 100 uh, very, and loss is very close to zero. It take le took less than five minutes and now we can export the generic code for training. Uh, so that takes us to here and we can see that there's a math file created. Uh, there you, you can see three because I did this, uh, this is my third time doing it but it's supposed to be only one and that is going to give you the data uh, also in the general code you see the training options you're going to see the layers which is the same thing that we did graphically and then passing the layers passing the uh, training data and the options you're going to use the train network command to give you the train network yeah so that's very convenient to have it that, that way I'm just going to close this and but also you can export the train network and the results so now we have the network in the workspace so let's take a quick look uh, with analyze network just to take a look and uh, uh, we, we can see better in here it's a very sequential uh, simple network uh, that goes from 32 by 32 by black and white uh, it's gonna the, the the geometric space is going to be divided by 2 by the max pooling the number of features increases to 64 then we have the transpose convolution which is going to bring back the geometric size to 32 by 32 and then you have the conv third convolution which is going to bring us to the classification domain of 2 by a uh, triangle and background and then we finally have the classification output for the same anti segmentation yeah so it's basically the same thing that mentioned before and now that we have it in here we can try it uh, with an image let's uh, load an image uh, so let's take a look at the test image it's gonna be basically a bunch of triangles and then we use the computer vision semantic segmentation method uh, passing the image and the train network that's all it needs and with that we're gonna get an, I an image that gives us the labels indicating whether each pixel is a triangle or uh, a background so we're gonna put with the label overlay that is a, a function from the image processing toolbox of MATLAB and we can display the image so we can we will see that effectively we, we got the semantic segmentation uh, remember the original image, which image was black and white and now the purple color indicates that the pixel belongs to the triangle category and the blue indicates a background category it's not perfect but at least it looks pretty precise uh, for this image okay uh, to recap we created a very simple uh, network uh, for semantic segmentation using the deep network designer from the MATLAB deep learning toolbox uh, we train it with a data set that contain uh, both images and the corresponding labeled images and we use the the command uh, of a uh, training network it uh, took less than five minutes but with more data it should take more and this is a, a very important a uh, way of detecting objects to get both geometrical properties and colors of the pixels thank you very much uh, for watching